بسم الله والحمد لله وأصلي وأسلم على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا First I want to uh, welcome all of you here today inshallah to this our first annual conference for Ramadan in preparation for Ramadan Jazakallah khairan brother Ibrahim for introducing this topic I don't have much time with you today so I'm going to jump to the topic directly inshallah And the topic today is this virtues of Ramadan what makes Ramadan so special for us? And when I was talking to my wife yesterday, I said, she said, which topic are you talking about? So I said, this virtues of Ramadan. I said, woo, that's a tough topic. I said, why? She said, because it's, it makes it very hard to deliver a message that almost everyone knows about. We all know about the virtues of Ramadan. So how can we make it interesting for people to listen to it? And that made me think, what is the goal of today's 15, 20 minutes that I have with you? And the goals I came up with, it's not to make it interesting. But I have three goals in mind. Number one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ This is just a reminder. What I'm going to say most likely you already know, but just a reminder for as the reminder benefits the believers. And may Allah make us amongst all of those who benefit, makes us amongst those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. Number two, is we need to move from what I call the realm of knowledge, the realm of knowledge, we know this stuff. We need to move from the realm of knowledge to contemplating about this knowledge, acting upon this knowledge. And I hope that when we talk today about these virtues, we think a little bit about this more in depth. Not just the literal meaning of these virtues, but how can this impact me? What kind of effect it has on my life? So contemplating about it, that's number two. Number three is to renew our intention. Renew our intention. As a matter of fact, they said the Salihin, pious people before us, they used to have these kind of, uh, they go intention shopping to a certain extent, if, if I can say this. They do not just think about, I have the good intention of attending Ramadan and fasting Ramadan, but they would break it down to multiple intentions. The more intentions you have, inshallah, the more benefit you have, the more rewards you have from, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to think, renew our intention, think about multiple intentions that we can incorporate in our worship during Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything, He's the sole creator. But amongst His creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. Chooses people, chooses times, and definitely the time of Ramadan is one of these chosen times. And signs of making it, this, this is a chosen time, I chose 10 virtues to share with you. And there's multiple more, but I'm just gonna go over them quickly, inshallah. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيْنَاتِ مَنْ هُدًا وَالْفُرْقَانَ This is the month that the Quran was revealed in. And I said, we all know this. I said, I wanna go beyond just knowing and think about the literal meaning. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this month to send his final message, the guidance to humanity. This is the message that's gonna stay till the end of time. And Allah chose the month of Ramadan to show how spe special this month is for this final message. So this is number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this month to fulfill a pillar of Islam. It's not just any fast. We are fulfilling a pillar of Islam. The way I look at Ramadan is to make it simpler for everyone, for us. We all know what the significance of the Kaaba is, of Mecca is. No one can go to Umrah or Hajj except to the Kaaba, to Mecca, right? The same thing with fasting. You can fast any month during the year, but you will not fulfill the pillar of Islam except in this special and specific month of Ramadan. So this by itself is Another significance and virtue of Ramadan. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Allah is giving us this month to attain this taqwa. What is that telling us? It's, telling us? it's some kind of a boot camp for us. It's an opportunity for us to engage in worship of Allah to come closer to Allah, to build a relationship with Allah. And Allah made it significant and says, you do this, 
you might attain taqwa. You will reach this level of taqwa. So this is the opportunity. This is number three. Number four, it comes in a very beautiful hadith about the month of Ramadan. Where Rasulullah tells us that the first day of Ramadan, once Ramadan starts, the shayateen, sufidat shayateen, the shayateen are chained. They're not let loose. Now you don't have the pressure from the shayateen, the whisper of the shaytan. It's decreased so that you might engage and come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet another incentive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same hadith gives us number five, which is the said the doors of hellfire are shut, completely closed. Another opportunity. And we know that we know of, at least from, from what I've read, this is the only month that you have the doors of hellfire shut. Give us the importance knowing that I'm away from hellfire. Try to come close to Allah. Number six, the doors of Jannah are wide open. Again, yet another incentive. And we see an incentive after incentive after incentive after incentive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the significance of this month. Number seven, the hadith goes on and says, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءَ مِنَ النَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan chooses people amongst us to be saved from hellfire. Saved from hellfire. This is significant. This is significant. You're written in this list of people saved, you're saved. That's it. And this happens in Ramadan. But the hadith beautifully said, وَذَلِكَ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَ This is not just happens in Ramadan in general. This happens every single night of Ramadan. Every single night is important and significant and special in its own right. And every single night you have this opportunity to be saved from the hellfire. Number eight. In a hadith, Rasulullah says, Man sama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi. Whoever fasts Ramadan, iman and believing in the virtue of Ramadan, believing in the obligation of fasting the month of Ramadan, wa ihtisaban, and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forgives all of the previous sins. And the scholar says all of the previous minor sins. But again, it's a great opportunity. I can think of some sins maybe I did from the beginning of the day. Imagine this full year or this whole lifetime just by engaging and fasting in this month of Ramadan and Qiyam in this month of Ramadan, all of these are, for, are forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number nine, not only that the month of Ramadan is extremely special and every single night and is significant in its own way, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a night, Laylatul Qadr, that's even better than 1,000 months. Yet an additional incentive. Yet more significance to the month of Ramadan. And number 10, some of us might engage in this. Rasulullah says that a month, a Umrah in the month of Ramadan is equivalent in reward to a Hajj. It does not seem like you know, I still have to do a Hajj, but the reward is there. As if you get the reward of a Hajj just by doing a Umrah in the month of Ramadan. And these are just 10 virtues I was able to to, co to collect for you and shall, shall share with you. But I said, I want to go beyond just giving you these virtues. What do we learn from this? When you see all of these virtues, 10 virtues, what do, you, what do you think, what's the significance of, what are the lessons learned from this? I, I, I want to question, uh, this is actually a question I would like to have volunteer to answer. After 10 virtues, and there is much more, what do you think? What did you learn from this? We said we need to go beyond just knowing it. What do you think the lesson learned is? I need a volunteer. Please. Anyone? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very good and He's opened so many opportunities for us. Let me ask you the question a different way. If you have one or two of these verses, if this is the month where we, have, we can fulfill our obligation of Siyam, the fourth pillar of Islam. Isn't this by itself significant enough? Do you agree? One of these is significant by itself. One of these virtues is just sufficient for us to engage in act on worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this month. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us one, two, three, ten, and even more. So the message that we have from here is not just this is a significant month, no. 
This is an extra, extra, extra special month. It's beyond significant, it's beyond special, it's way beyond this. It's a month that we need to really concentrate on and know the virtues of. This is the first message. Number two message. Black Friday, everyone knows Black Friday, right? Okay, so what do you do on Black Friday? They give you all of these shopping. Why? Because they give you all of these incentives. Said, so you know what? You go to Walmart, 50% off of this TV. 25% off of this computer or whatever. Right? Okay, why do you give you this 25% off? Why do they give you this 50% off? Incentive to buy. To incentive, do they really love you and you just, we, we really love you, here's 50%? No, it's just that they want you to go to the store or they want you to buy from them. They want a benefit from it. So they're giving you something and say they want something in return. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need this from us? And Allah didn't give us 50% off. He gave us all of these. And He doesn't need it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need any of this. You and I, we need it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you this free gift for you and I. And this is how we think about it. It's not just, oh, alhamdulillah, it's a nice virtue. Let's, yeah, I have the 10 virtues or the list. No, no, no. It's beyond this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy is, among, uh, is upon us. Huge mercy. He wants you and I to come closer to Him for our own benefit. Purely for our own benefit. Number three, I was walking outside, they had a book uh, for kids. And in the bottom of this book, like on the, on the cover, it says, Allah loves me. Allah loves me and subhanAllah it hit me outside I didn't have this on my list but I said Allah loves me that's it Allah is giving you because Allah is saying I love you I want you to come closer and I want you to feel this Allah loves you personally it's not like oh, someone no it's you and he's giving you all of these just for your own benefit just for your own benefit the last point I think I want to end up with inshallah. What is the ultimate goal? And I, I hope again we take this as to, to contemplate about these virtues, these points I'm, I'm trying to raise throughout the whole day today and throughout the month of Ramadan. The last one I want to leave you with is what, in your opinion, what is the ultimate goal of us coming close to Allah, this worship of Allah, engaging in Ramadan, engaging in Siyam and so forth. What is the ultimate goal? I need, this is, should be an easy one. What is the ultimate goal? Someone help me out. Jannah. Jannah. Perfect, Jannah. How many people agree that the ultimate goal is Jannah? Please raise your hand. Okay. Who disagrees? Because I saw some hands down. So the ultimate goal is Jannah. Agree? Okay. I have another point I want to share with you. This is a hadith. This hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is describing to us and this incident happened in Jannah. We believe in it as is, like this. This is actually truth that we believe in that's happening in Jannah. Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala yaqulu li ahli al-Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a conversation, and I'm trying to paraphrase. Allah has a conversation with the people of Jannah. And he asks them, says, Ya ahli al-Jannah. Fayaquluna rabbana labbayka rabbana. Allah, Asked the people of Jannah, said all oh, people of Jannah, and they respond in the most beautiful way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Are you pleased with Jannah? Are you pleased with the reward I gave you? And they respond, they say, Why don't we? So the question comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the way I imagine it says, Are you pleased? The people of Jannah would, would be kind of baffled. How come can we be? We are in Jannah. Right? This is the goal. This is the ultimate goal. We are there. Definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are pleased. How can we be pleased? You see, they, they can't understand. The question is just beautiful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they respond and say, Yes, we are definitely pleased. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds and says, But I can give you even more. And this is the point I want to come through. If we think Jannah is the highest ultimate reward, there's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is more than Jannah. These are the people of Jannah and Allah is giving them even more. He says, أَفْضَلْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And the people of Jannah again, they would respond and say, is there anything better than this? 
Is there anything better than this? We are in Jannah already. Is there anything better than this? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds and He says, أُحِلُّ عَلَيْكُمْ رِضْوَانِي فَلَا أَسْقَطُ عَلَيْكُمْ بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا I would bestow my pleasure on you and I will not be displeased with you ever again. Think about this. Think about this. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond Jannah. We seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the ultimate goal. In Jannah, Allah is telling us, Rasulullah is telling us, in Jannah, the highest of goals is to gain this pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I saying this? We are coming to the month of Ramadan. A lot of us, alhamdulillah, engage in the month of Ramadan, which is good. And we are trying to remind ourselves today, give you practical things that we can do, remind you of the, of the fast of the Prophet and so forth. But keep always in mind that the ultimate goal is for you to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to gain His pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this is the highest of rewards. It's even beyond Jannah. It's even beyond Jannah. Jazakumullah khairun. Allah may make us amongst those who will hear this and benefit from it. Anything that I've said correct is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The source of all it's good. And anything that I've said wrong definitely is from my own ignorance and from the shaitan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. But I hope that this would be beneficial for us. And I hope I said that you think about it, contemplate about it, and just let as knowledge. Let's take it from the realm of knowledge to the realm of contemplation. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.